This is defending the Immaculate. Together, we defend the honor of our Blessed Mother. The Virgin Mary, in the writings of the first Christians, why would this make her immaculate, free from sin, from the first moment of her conception and of her entire life? Why would it signify that she was immaculate if the first Christians believed she was? St. Paul tells the Thessalonians, stand firm and hold to the traditions which you were taught by us, either by word of mouth or by letter. There were traditions handed on to the first Christians that are not contained solely in the canon of sacred scripture. Indeed, the canon of sacred scripture, the books of the Bible of the New Testament as we have them, were not fully assembled until midway into the second and even the third century unanimously having the same books in every church no the faithful held on to traditions as well as scriptures if they were fortunate to have scriptures letters of the apostles or copies of those letters or copies of the the four gospels our lord himself he taught his apostles to preach the good news. The gospel, let us not forget, before it's written, it's primarily an oral teaching. It's something that was proclaimed and resounded throughout the world before. Before there were Bibles containing all the books together, Christians were instructed and they were instructed in content, of course, content that is present in those books, but also content that wasn't in those books that still form part of the Christian belief. The early Christians obviously received more than just content contained in scripture. We're told by Saint John that all the books in the world could not contain all that the apostles saw in the life and teaching of Christ. And so if the first Christians had an understanding that Mary lived a sinless life and was born without sin, this would indicate that this is true and a part of the oral teaching that they had received from the apostles, part of the kerygma, of the deposit of the Christian faith. So let's look at the evidence. And some of you that are watching, non-Catholics, Protestants, may not even be aware that such documents exist. They exist, my friends. They exist. And they demonstrate so much to us about the traditions of the apostles. So we read in a very early document, The Ascension of Isaiah. The report concerning the child was noised abroad in Bethlehem. Some said the Virgin Mary has given birth before she was married two months. And many said, she has not given birth. The midwife has not gone up to her. And we heard no cries of pain. Indicating, as I mentioned in a previous video, that the Virgin Mary gave birth without pain. Had a birth, a virgin birth, that indicates that she was free from original sin. Because the pain of childbirth was a consequence, a curse of original sin. Again in the Odes of Solomon, So the Virgin became a mother with great mercies, and she laboured and bore the son, but without pain, because it did not occur without purpose. And she did not seek a midwife, because he caused her to give life. Again repeating the same sentiment, that Our Lady gave birth in a virginal manner, a way without pain, a way that shows that she was free from sin. Hippolytus of Rome, in the beginnings of the third century, tells us, he, f he was the ark formed of incorruptible wood. He's talking here about our Lord. He was the ark formed of 
incorruptible wood. For by this is signified that his tabernacle was exempt from putridity and corruption. So Hippolytus is telling us about Our Lady, the Ark of the Covenant. In the earlier video, I showed what it means if Our Lady is the Ark of the Covenant, that it means she's immaculate. And Hippolytus joins the dots. He makes this clear to us that Our Lady was exempt from putridity, corruption, from all stain of sin. A little later, Saint Ephraim, he voices a sentiment that is there in Justin Martyr's dialogue with Trypho the Jew, Irenaeus against heresies and Tertullian, the flesh of Christ. They also have this sentiment of Mary as a new Eve. But here I've, I've put the quote of Saint Ephraim. Mary and Eve, two people without guilt, two simple people identical. One of them became the cause of our death, the other the cause of our life, making it clear that Mary was free from sin, just as Eve had been. And as I said, Mary as a new Eve signifies that she's immaculate. That's shown in another video in this series. And this was something that the early Christians got. They joined those dots. Virgin Mary as new Eve means she is immaculate. That Mary is without sin is also found explicitly in St. Augustine, St. Gregory the Wonderworker, St. Ambrose, St. Athanasius, St. Jerome, St. Gregory Nazianzian, all of the 4th century, the 300s, then St. Leo, St. Cyril of Alexandria in the 5th century. And then when you just look at the 6th century onwards, the 500s onwards, you know, basically you're looking at everyone. Everyone is saying this because there's more texts, there's more Christian writers, there are more preserved writings of saints at that point and of holy men and of, of Christian leaders, of bishops. And then it's, it's just unanimous. Every text talking about Our Lady is joining those dots and it's making it clear that we receive this. We receive this as part of the deposit of faith that in virtue of giving birth to the Son of God, it was so fitting and it was done, that Mary was immaculate. She is the Immaculate. May the Immaculate Virgin Mary intercede for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.